Hi. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing that you are a California homeowner and you've probably had some kind of big issue with the general home inspector who did an inspection on your house. And now you're wondering how to hold that inspector accountable. And you're hoping that there's going to be a state agency or somewhere that you can file a report to mediate or like deal with the problem that someone didn't know how to do their job and you are paying the price for it. And I am really sorry to tell you uh, that there's no one to file that report with, except for me. <laughs> My name's Jamie, and I am a regular homeowner in Sacramento, California. And uh, I am here because I just finished getting through the mediation process with my general home inspector. Um, I picked up a check yesterday from our settlement paid my legal fees and with what was left over it is you know barely enough really to to cover the cost of the damage the, not the damage but the mistake that was made um in my home inspection and i'm at the point where like i need to move on with my life but <laughs> i've been carrying this anger and this frustration for a really long time many months dealing with this guy so i can appreciate what you're going through and i wanted to leave a breadcrumb trail through the forest because i just can't believe that I'm the only person who deals with this. So what I'm hoping is that you'll watch this video, you'll reach out, you'll connect with me. Um, I'm happy to give you more advice, you know, over email or Zoom or whatever about how I dealt with this. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember the first time that I learned that there's no licensing situation, there's no regulation agency at all in California for general home inspections. It was about 4 a.m. for me, uh, and I was unable to sleep because I had just discovered, you know, maybe a day or two days before, uh, that, that the foundation on the house that I had just bought was, like, damaged and that the general home inspector who I paid to help deal with, um, you know, making the choice about like whether or not I could really afford to take on an investment and a project that big, um, that GHI like completely missed the perimeter foundation damage. And I mean, we're talking about like glaringly obvious cracks that were just like right there. Uh, you know, that anybody who knows anything about construction, anyone who's claiming that he does like and advertises that he does a, a general home inspection um, and pays attention to details, you would hope that he would catch that kind of thing. Um, you know, and he caught lots of other things in his report, but the foundation is underneath everything. Things. So, you know, when we discovered in on sep September 11th, 2019, that uh, the foundation was like so damaged, we halted all the other renovation projects that we had going. And so for the last like almost year, we've had no HVAC, like we got through the winter, like no heat, no air conditioning. Um, the windows are all broken and don't like open properly. They're all covered with saran wrap and plexiglass and duct tape and stuff like that to just like keep them closed. I mean, it's, uh, and we've got termite damage and like splintered floors and all of that stuff just got put on hold because like when you're dealing with foundation damage, it's under everything. So like you have to fix that first and you have to wait. And it's, it's been so hard, you know? So anyway, what I'm trying to say is that if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're going through something that's super stressful because you only get to the point of like trying to find, you know, a GHI complaint line or something like that when you are at your wits end like I was. And I just, I do, I remember like scrolling at like 4 a.m. and I found a, a realtor blog for her here in California and she was like talking about how you know the last time that there was any attempt to introduce legislation to regulate GHIs in California it was 2008 2008 you know and it, and it got shut down for whatever reason and I, to the best of my knowledge there hasn't been another attempt to try to legislate you know but I mean it's like this is terrible for people like us who are in this situation. And so what I wanna share with you a little bit is what I learned about the process of going through all of this and how to deal with it. Um, you know, because very soon after I discovered the foundation damage, like we're talking hours, I contacted the GHI who did the report and completely missed including this, you know, and, I didn't get anywhere with him in that conversation, you know, and, and it did take like basically 
the better part of a year, um, partly because, you know, when, when you've never been through something before, you don't know how to navigate it. So it's like very overwhelming and confusing. Um, and hopefully, you know, if you're in a similar situation by watching my video, taking note of my tips and like taking action on them. And if you want to have a conversation, we can. Hopefully it won't take as long for you to resolve your situation. Um, but I did learn some things along the way. And I'm hoping to like share those things with you, right? So, I mean, obviously, like, first of all, uh, there is nobody <laughs> regulating, which is just so hard for me still to like wrap my mind around. Um, I've even gotten through to my contact at the Contractors State Licensing Board for California, and I've talked with her, and she's in the office that investigates complaints against contractors and you know people in the construction industry who are not doing their jobs like i've talked with her and i have like triple checked this if you want to quadruple check it i'll give you the contact info but it's like i can't register a complaint with the cslb because they don't have jurisdiction to hold general home inspectors accountable so they're basically able to write whatever they want in their reports for us as homeowners. And if they've got a good insurance company with a fancy lawyer who has a lot of experience doing this, which let me tell you, they got a lot of experience dealing with people like us, you know, they, they get out of these situations. Um, now I did get out of it with some money, you know, not enough to feel like I won um, and, and barely enough to like, you know, it covers about 10% of the cost of what I'm dealing with, with the foundation. But still, you know, I'm gonna share what I learned because it's worth you knowing it. Um, and I, I really think that it's worth us fighting this. You know, I, I ultimately hope that one day we're gonna be able to change legislation for real in this state because like California needs it. Um, but I think what's also very clear to me is that no one is collecting data. There's no sense of the scale of this problem in our state or what we are truly dealing with. And that is the reason why I am audaciously and ridiculously declaring myself the complete filing department, you know, I, and I've got on my website, um, questions that I hope that you will come and answer about your situation with the, the general home inspector who uh, had errors and omissions in his report or her report that led to the problems that you've got, you know, share that information with me because what I'm hoping is that if we put a net down into that water and start catching this, we're going to get a sense of the scale of what we're dealing with because my hunch is that, you know, I mean, Mary Hayashi tried to have legislation in 2008. 2008. So that was all those years ago. Somebody knew that this was a problem and it got as far as legislation and then got shut back down. But I mean, like, maybe we can make another run at that. But, you know, we need more current information. We need more current data about how many homeowners in California are being impacted by these kinds of things, you know. So that's why I'm hoping that you'll really, like, stick with me on this. Um, so what I learned. Uh, First of all, the, the mediation process is going to feel a lot like a joke. I remember that the, the first thing that I tried to do when I discovered that um, InterNACHI, which is basically just like an online training program, that was the organization that educated my general home inspector about how to, how to inspect a home. Um, when I contacted them or I searched on their website, I found that there was a a link on their page that said that they, they would help me mediate, you know, with a, a problem with my GHI. So I contacted them and I ended up being put in touch with, you know, people at InterNACHI. And it went nowhere. I mean, it really went nowhere because what they said was, oh, you know, that's too bad that like your foundation is completely ruined. Like that's too bad that that's, you know, a hundred thousand dollar repair job. Um, but, you know, like uh, we have no jurisdiction. We have no, you know, agency or like responsibility in California. So like, there's nothing we can do. And that was the first time it was so shocking to me to hear that, like, you know, the people who trained him can't do anything slash really just don't care. Um, and so as I kind of continued with it and I, I wasn't able to let go of it, I found out the second thing um, after talking to a, a few lawyers about it and getting some paid consultations, I discovered that I had 
unknowingly signed a contract uh, with the GHI. When I paid for the home inspection while I was in escrow, uh, you know, I s checked a box like on his website basically saying that I, um, you know, was agreeing to like certain terms and conditions, which I didn't really understand. So you may need to go back and look at, you know, what kind of contract might have arrived without you noticing it when you paid for this inspection or ask or look on their website or whatever, or just ask for a copy of it because there was probably some sort of contract. Now, without understanding it at all, I agreed to some of the following. I agreed to not take my GHI to court, not to sue him, and I agreed to mediation. And I also agreed that he didn't, like, really know how to do a job beyond a certain point. And what's important about that is that this ends up getting used in retrospect later when these errors and omissions get made by general home inspectors, that automatically is like, oh, well, that's beyond the scope of their job. Like, they don't need to know how to do that. Um, you know, even though my guy was, like, advertising that, is still, to this day, advertising on his website that he can do exactly the thing that he did not do. Um, you know, the contract language is phrased in such a way that, you know, all kinds of errors and omissions can be driven through those loopholes, you know, that are written. They're very generous, you know, so go back and see, you know, what kind of contract you got. Because if you're going to talk with a lawyer, they're going to ask you to see that that um, contract because that lays out the terms that like we may not have realized it when we paid, but we agreed to play by some jacked rules. And like now that's how the game is going to be played because it's the wild, wild west, sweetheart. And this is all we got. All right, the next thing that I learned um, was that actually I I didn't pay for a lawyer uh, like right off the bat because I was like very hamstrung financially trying to figure out how to pay for all this stuff. So uh, I thought for a while that I was going to do it on my own. So I pushed that ball pretty far <laughs> before I ended up um, calling in backup with a, with a lawyer. But what I discovered was the sort of magic words that got the ball rolling was when I sent a letter to my general home inspector and I used the words that I'm asking you to open a claim under your error and omission insurance policy. Open a claim under your error and omission insurance policy. Um, and then I gave him a deadline, which was about 10 days past, like, the point that we were at. Um, and he, like, by doing that, it it wasn't... It was more authoritative than what I had been doing um, because, you know, I'm not a lawyer, obviously. So I, d I don't know all the secret moves that you can make that, like, help you up level to get out of the game. But in retrospect, like, the fact was I basically just told him, like, I am going to need your help paying for this. I'm, I'm coming after you. You know, I'm going to expect that you're going to help me pay for this in some capacity. And uh, ask your insurance company for the money because, like, that's what you have it for. So... The morning of the deadline, I followed up with him again uh, and said, like, hey, today's the day, you know. And within a few hours, actually, after that, his insurance company's claims adjuster reached out to me and said that they were aware that there was a problem. And then they assigned a lawyer to me. And then the lawyer was the one who communicated with me after that point. Um, and I thought, you know, again, that I would be able to, like, save money by fighting uh, my own legal battle in that sense. And so for, I want to say probably eight, eight or 10 weeks, probably eight or 10 weeks, maybe even 11 or 12 weeks, I was emailing and writing to the lawyer trying to coordinate, you know, trying to argue my own position. And I got to the point where like, I knew that I mean, I couldn't let it go, basically, because it was just, it seemed so wrong to me. The whole thing just seemed so wrong. I couldn't let it go. Um, and I ended up getting another consultant with another lawyer who is the one who helped me get my settlement, ultimately. And he used my argument, like the argument that I had been using. He, the lawyer used exactly the same argument. The difference was he added case law and like suddenly... The lawyer started taking the other the insurance company 
the GHI's lawyer started taking my situation more seriously when I got a lawyer. So um, borrow the money if you need to. Push that ball as far as you can on your own. Uh, I was not always very professional when I wrote to the lawyer. I was really angry, you know. Um, I was clear and I was, you know, doing my best, but like I, I was not always professional. Um, and maybe that hurt my chances. You know, I might have gotten more in retrospect if I hadn't done that. But I mean, like, I mean, I paid almost 6000 in legal fees um, without having him handle it the whole time for me you know I mean that was six thousand for legal fees at the end where like I had already gotten the GHI to open the claim I had already I mean I know that the way that I did it definitely saved money so um it's gonna be like super frustrating but borrow the money if you have to because if the lawyer thinks that you have a chance of recovering anything you know go with it and then let that lawyer drive like don't interfere too much because I mean the fact is like I had zero experience with any of this and I still don't have experience what I'm saying is find a lawyer who you feel like you trust and then follow their advice like don't don't grab the steering wheel on the bus while they're driving at the last minute and think like we got to take that exit ramp because even when I was in mediation I was so emotional. I was really upset and it was very hard for me to think clearly. And I almost walked away completely at the table from everything that they, you know, were going to give me. And my lawyer like walked me through that and was like, don't turn down this money. You know, it may not be as much as you want, but like, it's not nothing. And at least, at least it was going to cover his legal fees, you know, um, and, and then a little bit more. So, um, you know, pay for consultation with a lawyer, uh, push the ball as far as you can on your own, you know, get as much done as you can. And I think at least get the ball rolling asking for an insurance claim from your general home inspector. Because that part, I think, is like pretty easy, to be honest. Um, you know, just make sure that it's in writing, document everything, all of that. Uh, and then, you know, I think the thing that is what I learned that's so important about dealing with the lawyers is that you are, you are going to be wrong. Okay. I mean, it's their job. Every time I got a lawyer, a letter from the general home inspector's lawyer, I felt like a piece of shit. You know, I felt like a stupid little girl who like didn't know anything. I mean, it was so patronizing um, and incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Uh, and it, I just, it was terrible. Um, getting those and 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 I knew even while I was reading those letters like this is his job is to make me feel like garbage his job is to make me give up and his job is to make me try to go away and he never met me <laughs> so you know you gotta fight it you have to fight it and it's not gonna be easy um but I think really like if you feel like you were wronged Talk to more than one lawyer if you have to. Let the situation evolve. Don't necessarily give up because I feel like this is how these guys win, you know? And this is ultimately what's so frustrating to me after having gone through this whole process. Like, okay, I got some money out of it. But, you know, at mediation, uh, the mediator, who's a retired judge, was, you know, in the room with us explaining, like, what was going to happen on mediation day. And he looked at me and he said, you need to know what you want. Because, like, what some of the things that you might want can't be had inside of this room and they can't be had through the mediation process and other things like you need you need to ask ask for what you want here today at mediation and also know that you have to make reasonable requests that can be met and fulfilled while we're here and I said to him like right off the bat I was like the thing that has irked me over and over again throughout this process is the fact that it has cost so much money to get this far to have a conversation with him and there's still no accountability you know and that's ultimately what it comes down to like okay so i finished with mediation on august 3rd you know three weeks later i got my check i'm cashing that um but what about you what about my friends who are buying houses for the first time? What about our families? What about our neighborhoods and our communities? What about all the other people, you know, like, for example, that like when Mary Hayashi tried to introduce that legislation in 2008 that got shut down, what about all of the situations, you know, that have been culminating in that? We need this and, and it still hasn't happened. 
And the judge looked at me and he was, I, he was like, yeah, you're, you're not going to get that here today. <laughs> no, I'm not. But that's why I'm here making this video for you. Because like, ultimately what this comes down to is that you know, get the money that you can from the insurance company. Don't give up about that because if they have insurance, they have it for a reason. Um, and the accountability is not going to come through there. That's why I am making this video and why I'm hoping that you will come to my website, file a report claim complaint thing with me so that we can start tracking this. Because what I have to believe is that if we just start measuring what's out there. And if we just start gathering the data and keeping track of it in some sort of database where, you know, legislators may, or the attorney general may eventually look at that and be like, okay, you know what? We need to take this seriously again, because this is a statewide issue, you know, and especially when we've got the COVID pandemic and wildfires and all of these other kinds of things that are going on. It's like, we need housing. It is so important that we live in safe places that are maintainable and that we are not lied to. I, I shouldn't say lied to, although, you know, that may happen that there are, that we are lied to, but you know, we need general home inspectors who are able to do their jobs competently and that care enough about what they write in those reports that they get it right the first time. That matters a lot to people like you and me. Um, you know, so I know this has been a long video and I'm, I'm gonna let you go here soon, but I think there's really like two choices that you've got that you can make at this point. Um, choice number one is you can feel ultra frustrated uh, and give up and just be like, fuck this, you know, cause no one's watching and no one cares about us uh, and, and give up and throw in the towel and become very cynical. And I would understand that because there are weeks where I have felt exactly the same way. Um, but I hope that you won't take choice number one. Choice number two is that we try to fucking do something about this. Choice number two is come to my website, connect with me, reach out, you know, share uh, your answers to the questions that I'm asking about like what happened with your general home inspector, all of that stuff. Submit that to my silly little beginning database because the thing is, you know, and I, I had like a lot of feelings about am I am I really just going to like declare that like I am now the office that is receiving complaints about general home inspectors in all of California. I'm the only person that I know of that is receiving those complaints. And, I, you know, this voice in my head was like, who am I to do that? And I'm like, who am I not to? I mean, the fact is, like, who are these general home inspectors to be inspecting our houses? Who are they? They, they are not licensed they are not monitored they are not paying dues they are not regulated and there is no agency doing any of that for us so who are they to do their job so here i am audaciously saying like yeah come to my website like let's see what we can do about this you know because maybe we can eventually do something about it. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take with wildfires and systemic racism and pandemics. I mean, we've got a lot on our plate right now, California, like I know we do, but I think that at the same time, when you are a homeowner and you're going through what I have gone through, this is everything. You know, this this makes or breaks your credit. This makes or breaks your mortgage. This makes or breaks your fucking life. Like this makes or breaks homelessness, you know? I mean, it's like, this is everything to you. And so I just can't let it go and walk away from it forever and say, you know, whatever, like I'm leaving you a breadcrumb trail and I hope that you will follow it. Um, so the link to my website is in the comment, um, in the description below this video. And uh, yeah, like, Let's see what we can do about it because I'm just not the kind of person, like, I don't want to give up without a fight. It's really obvious to me that we've needed this for a very long time, at least the last decade, and it hasn't happened. And maybe there's something, maybe there is something that we might be able to do about that. So anyway, if you need more advice or whatnot, you know, shoot me an email, um, find me on my website, my comments, uh, or reach out through YouTube and, and we can have a way to dialogue about it. But um, yeah, don't give up. Fight the good fight.